help us conduct an informal test of the proposed new .08 limit. We wanted to see how quickly a social drinker might reach that threshold and to see if our test subjects felt impaired. Minnesota must adopt the lower alcohol limit by 2007 or face the loss of millions of dollars in federal highway funds. Minnesota is one of only four states to not yet adopt .08, but as CARE 11's Brad Woodard is about to show us, when it comes to drinking, everyone's limit is unique. At Keegan's Irish Pub in Minneapolis. How are we doing? You made it! The conversation flows as freely as the pint. Sounds a little one. Oh, he's doing great. Listen in and you'll hear <laughs> not just an exchange of words, Say but also numbers, one number in particular. How much would I have to drink to be at 0.08? 0.08, I'm not sure that it will make a difference. With the looming prospect of tightening Minnesota's drunk driving standard from 0.10 to 0.08, questions abound. Chief among them, if you're a social drinker, how will it affect you? But there's always variables. Your metabolism, how much you've had to eat. So you've got to, you've got to be very, very careful. And, it's, and the bottom line is real simple. If you're not sure, don't do it. With the assistance of the Minnesota State Patrol and four volunteers, we decided to conduct an experiment. Stay looking right at it. Our test subjects are put through field sobriety tests before their first drink, so the troopers will have something to measure their performances against later in the evening. Honestly, I don't think .08 would be impaired. I think I would, was of the opinion, or still am of the opinion, that .08 isn't all that high. What do I think they're going to learn? I think they're going to be surprised how much they can actually drink. For two hours, the troopers become bartenders, serving up the drinks as quickly as our volunteers can consume them. By the way, they all had something to eat before the experiment began. About halfway through the experiment... I'm starting to get, like, on the edge of where I'm getting giggly. So to speak. <laughs> the alcohol seems to be affecting some more than others. I feel okay. I feel fine. I'm feel, feeling, a, feeling a little uh, relaxed right now, you know. Feeling good. I uh, just finished my fourth one, I believe. You ready for another one? I sure am, sir. Thank you. The results of a breathalyzer test after an hour of drinking may surprise you. 0 0.024. Keep going, keep going. There you go. 0 0.072. You feel like you're impaired at all? Yeah, I do. You feel the effects of what you've had to drink? Yes. Wow. There's what it is. is he ended up testing a 0 0.040. 0 .040. So he's one halfway to the point oh eight right after now. after how many drinks? And you've had how many drinks? Five. Keep going. There you go. That's good. She's a point okay. zero zero seven six. So she is right now just under the point oh eight. And Nicole, how much have you had to drink? I had four drinks. I feel fine. Like sorry mom, but I would probably drive. What is the biggest myth in the debate surrounding point oh eight? And I think what's being lost is that people are impaired at a point oh eight. People are impaired. Do you not have a two and if oh eight were to pass, well, and I hope it does. I sincerely yeah. hope it does. We're going to save lives in Minnesota. There'll be a lot of uh, citizens of Minnesota that should not be criminals or become criminals. I have made approximately 1,200 DWI arrests in working nights in Minneapolis and the western suburbs as a trooper. You're impaired at 08, and you shouldn't be driving. I don't think anybody would argue that there's some impairment um, at a level of 0.08 or 0.09, but what does the average person do? They slow down. That's, that's, that's their natural tendency. Speaking of slowing down, here were the results at the end of our two-hour experiment. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep Adam keep blew a 0.107. So he's actually just above the legal limit right now. And that's after how many beers and what? Eight, six beers. Six yeah, beers? Two hours. Okay. Eight. Eight? Eight. As for Jessica, who consumed a bottle of wine all by herself. So you think you are impaired at this time? Mm hmm Do you think anybody should be able to drive? At where I am at? Where you're at right now? No. Here's what you, you tested was a point zero five five. I don't even think I could drink myself to a point oh eight then. In short, you don't have to be point oh eight or point one oh to be impaired or to be arrested. I think I would be worthy of arresting. Honestly, even though I'm not at a point oh eight, I wouldn't want to see myself or anyone else driving. After eight drinks in two hours, Matt registers a point uh, oh eight five. Would you drive right now? Um, I, I would hope that I wouldn't. And then there's Nicole, who had five drinks in two hours. Do you think you should be arrested right now if you're no, driving? You don't feel like you're impaired at all? I, yeah, I've drank, but... Okay. 
You tested a point zero eight nine. Do you think you should be arrested? No. I, 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 really, I really don't. But another try at the field sobriety tests indicates that Nicole may be more impaired than she realizes. 1022, 1023, 1024. Nicole is also instructed to take nine steps, heel to toe, then turn around, take another nine steps, and stop. Once you start, don't stop until the test is complete. Do you understand? Apparently not. Instead of stopping after the second series of nine steps is instructed, Nicole turns around and starts over again. What did they tell you to do? You told me until I stopped. Until, until you told me to stop. Would I take her in? Right now, yes, I would. I really think if we were on the tape that we'd see that he told me until he told me to stop. Well, you have the ability to do that. <laughs> Once you start, don't stop until the test is complete. Do you understand? Yeah, it, it definitely changes my point of view. You can be a social drinker. We're not telling you not to drink. We're telling you not to drink to excess and get behind the wheel of a car. We're telling you to use your God-given common sense. And if you don't know where that limit is, if you don't truly understand, then don't do it. Brad Woodard, Care 11 News, Minneapolis. And we want to point out that everyone who took part in our test received a ride home from a sober driver. The .08 legislation has passed the Minnesota Senate. It must now be considered in the House, where several versions of the bill are up for debate. Weren't you surprised?